Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 19th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse today is going in his diary over decoding hexadecimal encoded data that is very often seen if an attacker has access to a console but now wants to transmit a binary file over that uh, connection. First time I've uh, seen this in sort of widespread use was with Mirai. The Mirai bot uh, spread via these echo commands, uh, just like what uh, Jesse is describing here. And uh, see a lot with all of these sort of Mirai derivatives, where basically an attacker is just breaking into a system, using a simple password that was set in the system, and now needs to use the connection they have established here to the console, to the terminal, uh, to transfer a binary file. The methods that Jesse is going over here is using CyberChef, first of all, pretty easy to do it with that. And then, uh, well, my favorite method is basically just using XXD. That's the uh, command line utility you find commonly installed on Unix systems that converts hexadecimal back into binary or back. And then we got today Oracle's quarterly critical patch update. This is the October edition and it fixes 387 vulnerabilities. Of course, this large number has to be put in context of all the different products that Oracle has to offer. A couple of highlights here, of course, I'm not going to talk about 387 different vulnerabilities, but a lot of these vulnerabilities are in open source Java components. And there are a couple that sort of keep repeating uh, like Apache Spark and uh, commons collections and such uh, that are being patched here. Some of these vulnerabilities, I believe, are actually a little bit older and not really that terribly recent uh, vulnerabilities in these components. So you may have been exposed there for a while. The one component that sticks a little bit out here, in my opinion, is uh, Oracle Fusion. Uh, this middleware product we have seen it hacked in the past, and it has, I think, about a dozen or so uh, critical vulnerabilities, meaning CSS score of like 9.8. And I think there's even one 9.9 vulnerability in there. Yes, uh, it'll probably take you a while to patch all of these products. And uh, as usual, also review whether or not these products are actually exposed uh, to the internet. And Mannion is warning that a vulnerability that Citrix patched last week, a CVE 2023-4966, is already being exploited in the wild starting in August. This affects the Netscaler ADC and Netscaler uh, gateway appliances. The trick here is that the vulnerability gives the attacker access to session IDs that are currently in use with the gateway. So they can use that to essentially then impersonate users. And of course, if an attacker does have access to session IDs, it doesn't matter how many factors you're using for authentication, the session ID is typically all they need to authenticate. So this makes this certainly a critical vulnerability that if already being exploited, well, is something that you need to address. Now, there's also some additional guidance from Citrix, like, for example, restricting access to your gateway and other mitigating steps that you may want to consider. Well, and while it's kind of hard these days to surprise me with stuff that's exposed to the internet, I was still a little bit surprised here that people apparently think it's okay to expose Jupyter notebooks with uh, no apparent real sort of password protections uh, to the internet. Jupyter notebooks, if you're not familiar with it, well, they're sort of web-based systems that allow you to run a code. So literally, code execution is what you use them for. And of course, it didn't take long for a malware crew to figure out that people are stupid enough to expose them. So uh, they're now being 
exploited. The malware is not really all that notable. It does steal uh, credentials for cloud services, uses Discord for command and control. One neat little trick, according to Cato Security, who wrote up uh, this malware, is that it's using codeberg.org, like a free code hosting platform, to uh, propagate its code. Well, um, whenever there's anything free that allows you to store files, retrieve files, it's inevitably going to be exploited and abused uh, by malware like this. So no real surprise here either. Oh yeah, and uh, they also like to install then a miner on your system. Well, uh, this is it uh, for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.